Hi guys, my name is Sergey, and I'm the owner of Sergey Green Studio. We provide photography and videography service here in Los Angeles. And with this video, I'm starting uh, the series of uh, uh, venue reviews so you can watch them and make a first impression about the venue without actually driving there. Of course, if you like the place, uh, you better book an appointment and uh, walk around this. But I thought it's much easier to just grab a cup of coffee and just sit and, and watch YouTube for like 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, we're gonna go through this venue the way the wedding goes. We're gonna start from the getting ready shots, uh, reception, uh, first look, everything. We're gonna do this pretty much in three parts, like before the ceremony, the actual ceremony, and after. But before we go into that, I want to start with the parking lot, because um, you might think that your wedding starts with the getting ready shots, but in reality, in reality logistically, it's starting from the parking lot. Uh, the Orchid Ranch has uh, the space for about 50 cars or so, and they can accommodate about 170, 180 people at the, your wedding. So it should be enough space for you. Why is it important? Well, um, if the venue doesn't have the parking spot, like uh, some of the venues, for example, you'll have to park your car somewhere and you'll have to get a shuttle. So it's additional work and you don't want to do that. Another thing, when you have all of your belonging with you, you want to uh, easily walk from the place you park to the getting ready spots. And we actually don't do any cuts or anything like that. We're gonna film as we go. So you're going to get the realistic perspective of the venue itself. So let's get started. We're gonna go actually from the parking lot itself uh, to the getting ready uh, spot. And while we walk there, I want to mention that it's incredibly important and it's incredibly valuable uh, to have your getting ready uh, location at the venue, not at the hotel somewhere. I mean, it's an option, but if you can choose the venue with the getting ready spots, that's ideal. Why is that? You don't want to do uh, your makeup and then load your uh, dresses and everything and uh, drive to the venue and put the dress there and everything. You just want to arrive to the spot and do everything uh, at, at one specific location. So let's go over here. As you can see, we're just walking for about a minute or so. Um, this is pretty much the main area where uh, everything going to be. That's the main building. And you're uh, getting ready going to happen right over here. So over here, we have uh, two great spots for your getting ready shots. We have the uh, groom's party getting ready right over here, and we have the bridal party getting ready right over here. This place is slightly larger than this one, and it's actually incredible how big it is. It's like if you compare it with the good hotels, let's say like uh, Four Seasons in Beverly Hills, this suite is like four times bigger. So you can place your dress there, you can put, uh, you can accommodate very easily all of your uh, wedding party there. Um, another very good thing about it is that um, you can close the doors completely for the groom's party. And if we do anything right over here, they're not going to see this. What do I mean by that? While we do the getting ready shots, it's not like we always uh, taking the pictures and videos of you doing the makeup and everything else. We also do uh, detail shots of the dress, shoes and everything else. So we're going to grab your dress and we're going to place it right over here. And that's actually another beauty of it because at some spot, let's say the, at the hotels, you don't really have the place to do your uh, shots of the dress, right? Over here, I can easily grab it, a walk for like 30 seconds and just place it right over here. Another beautiful thing, I can place the bridesmaids dresses right over here. So I can align them like five or six of them and they're going to look absolutely beautiful right there. Um, for the details, shots of the shoes and the rings and everything, I prefer to use uh, this bench right over here. 
at the same time, you can use uh, all, all of this uh, plans and everything else. Um, right after the getting ready is done, uh, we can do the first look. Actually, before we move to the first look, I, I want to point another thing. If you, let's say, uh, got ready in a different timeline, uh, let's say the guys got ready quicker than the girls or the opposite. Still, you can use this place for the separate shot. Uh, you can use uh, this area right over here for the groom shot. Uh, you can use that area, I'll show it to you a little bit later, uh, for the bridal shot as well. Um, let's, let's go forward to the first look. Uh, where we are standing right now, that's the perfect uh, spot for, for the first look. Uh, why is that? Um, you can easily see, and it's uh, 1 p.m. right now, that if I'm standing right over here, I have the pretty hard uh, shades under my eyes, and it's not ideal lighting situation. And when I'm stepping right over here, I have the very nice uh, place in the shade, and I can place my bride just right over here, and I can ask the groom uh, walk this way and tuck her in the shoulder or the opposite usually actually the the opposite the uh, the groom standing just right over here and the bride walking right over here tapping him in the shoulder he's just turning around looking at her and everything else um, also this spot is very good for the first look because we can shoot from uh, multiple angles we, uh, one of our photographers can stand right over there where is the cameraman right now uh, the other can stand right over here, so we can get multiple angles. Uh, but prime reason why I'm choosing this, it's actually two reasons. First, like I said, it's the light. You can see this right now very easily. I'm stepping back and forth, and the light is changing dramatically. In your first look, happening around this time, around 1 p.m., so it's not like we have a choice. We have to use this spot. Um, and another thing, this spot, in my personal opinion, maybe someone would disagree, this spot is uh, good for the first look and the picture of the dress only. You, can re you cannot really use it for, let's say, the sunset pictures or something else. And uh, my personal preference is to use as much location at the venue as possible so we're not repeating ourselves. So when you're opening your album, it's, uh, it's as... Uh, it has as much variety as possible, pretty much. Another thing I want to mention right over here while we are here, it's this little spot over here. Again, it's in the shade. And what I like to do, I like to place my bride just right over there and do the detail shots of the bride. What do I mean by that? I mean uh, the pictures of the, her dress, of her holding the flowers, uh, her hair pieces and in hair overall, every, everything pretty much, all, all these details. So let's keep going forward as I say the way the timeline goes, the way the wedding goes. So we just did the first look, what did we do after that? We're doing the wedding party pictures. Again, uh, it's very easy at this venue, we're grabbing the guys and the girls uh, in the entire wedding party and go back to the barn that we just passed and doing uh, all the wedding party pictures. Again, notice, uh, notice how easy it is to walk from, the, from that spot to the place where we do all the wedding party pictures. For the guys, it's not really important. We're walking in the, in the shoes just like that. It's not a big deal for us. But for girls walking the dress on the hills, that might be a little bit challenging. And over here, you, it's, it's effortless, really. This zone overall, I would call it the zone of the wedding party pictures, I, I like to use specifically for that. Uh, there's few other spots where you can do the um, uh, wedding party pictures, but my personal preference in this one, and I like to start with uh, this barn. Why is that? You can actually partially see this right now. Um, let's say uh, you have your, uh, I would say like standard uh, summertime wedding timeline. 
and you've done your first look at 1 uh, p.m. and uh, closer to 2, 3, you're doing your wedding party pictures. The way the sun is going, this venue is going to go a little bit more this way and it start to create the shade. So this shade that we can see right over here right now is going to extend right over here. What does it mean for me as a photographer is that I'm going to have this entire place in the shade and I can place about 20 uh, people uh, right behind this wall right over here. Let's say your wedding party, party is close to the football team. I can place them right over here. So it's nice place uh, in the shade. The other, uh, I would say, unique thing about it, it's very distinguished. So this venue known for this barn. Uh, and the other thing, uh, that's why I, like prefer, why I like prefer to do this. If I do this somewhere at the um, uh, ceremony side, I'll have to repeat myself later with the family pictures. And ideally, I don't want to do that again because I like the variety in uh, photos and videos. So I would much prefer to do it right over here. The only downside personally for me is the, this handicap sign right over here. Um, we usually fix that with, a, with like two ways. We Photoshop it or another idea that just came to our mind is just unscrew this and put it somewhere for the wedding, for the wedding itself. Few other options where you can do your wedding party pictures. And I often combine them because we do the entire wedding party and then we do the separate pictures of the guys and the girls. Sometimes I like to relocate them right over here. And if you uh, visually crop this place, you can see that it's very cool spot. It's like a rustic hipster style uh, background right over here. So, uh, that's pretty much it for the uh, for the wedding party pictures, and after that we move into our uh, to our ceremony actually. And uh, this venue has three spots for the ceremony. Uh, let's go through all of them, and the way it goes, we're just going to go uh, from least favorite, the least popular to the most popular. And I will explain you why is that. Again, notice how little the distance is between the place where we just uh, took the wedding party pictures to the reception area. This is very important. Actually, logistically, usually the wedding party goes back to their room just to take a break uh, to, to do some drinks and makeups and everything. And we go to the uh, we go to the ceremony side to do all of the details and everything. So, as I said, this place has few uh, spots for the ceremony, and this is actually a very first spot. From what I've seen, uh, it was very popular, like in uh, late 80s, 90s. Uh, to do the wedding right over here by the gazebo. It's also very popular for the small weddings right over here. So basically that's just the way it is, like few flowers right over here uh, for prettier look and the actual couple just standing right over here and all of the guests sitting right over here. The advantage, uh, it's of course the classic look of the gazebo. Disadvantage, it's actually two of them. Um, there is not enough space over here for, let's say, 100 uh, people, 120 people, depending on your guest count. And the other thing, uh, if, let's say, you decided to do your ceremony somewhere around four or five, it's not very ideal light over here. But for the small wedding, uh, I would consider uh, this spot for sure. The second spot is not far away, it's just right over here. And again, uh, there's few advantages and disadvantages about it. Um, first of all, you, you, you can see the statues right over there in this beautiful columns right over here. And it looks like they've been remodeled, so it looks very beautiful. Uh, usually if you choose this spot, the arch goes just right over here and 
from the design point of view, you have to be a little bit careful over here. You don't want to cover this touches. The, that's the reason pretty much why you chose this plot. Um, you want to go like minimalistic over here. Uh, the light is a little bit better, again, because the sun going to move behind this tree and you have more place in the shade right over here. But what I noticed, and especially um, challenging for us, for photographers and videographers, when we shoot at this location, um, the guests are covered with the shade, but the bride and the groom not. And when we shoot, uh, it's, it does make a difference in terms of lighting situation. So it's pretty challenging for us, but it's not like you have to care about it. Or we will care about it, um, but I thought it just worth mentioning. Um, th third spot, and this is the most popular spot out of all of them, out of all of my weddings that I've done here. And I think I've done since 2015, I think over 20 weddings for sure. Most of my weddings were happening, uh, the reception uh, ceremony, were happening just right over there. Actually, uh, before we go there, I want to also mention this spot right over here because we're probably not going to come back to it later. This is very good spot for the first look as well. So it's not like you just sat on that spot, you can also use uh, this spot as well. In this case, your uh, groom just standing right over here, the bride approaching uh, right over here, top him in the shoulder and he's turn around. Another um, very cool spot and it's also popular for the first look and it's for uh, a couple pictures when we're taking a picture of just the bride and the groom is just this one right over here and it's actually become very popular. You might see the look of it. It's become very popular after the La La Land movie and if you watch it until the end, the last 15, 10, 10 15 minutes, was shot right over here. So the Ryan Gosling was standing right over here with, I forgot what's her name, but this basically was shot right over here. And this year after this movie, we've shot quite a lot of uh, pictures right over here. First look, everything. So this is, was like the center of attention. Another very cool look I like for the sunset pictures, especially in that's where uh, the photographer is just standing right over there if our videographer can, can show us from, from that spot. And the couple actually standing right over here. And again, it's all about the light. Uh, the sun gonna go this way and it will create the very cool um, up, uh, like contour light over here. So th the look of it, I will better show you on the photo. I'll, I'll just put it in the video you will see that this spot is uh, like especially beautiful on the sunset. And I'll mention uh, how the light goes uh, when we're going to cover the sunset locations. But for now, let's come back to the ceremony side. The third um, ceremony side and the most popular one. So we'll, for this one, we'll have to go right over here to the little interest in forest the little rabbit right over here hope it will give us more likes um so the third spot is this one and as you can see it's very spacious and uh, from my experience and i've done tons of weddings all over los angeles and malibu area and everywhere this spot is very very spacious it can fit 100 and 150 people absolutely easy i glad actually that they did this because uh, a few years prior to that they weren't, they wasn't putting anything to protect the grass and lots of the time for the reception, we would, uh, the venue would have to cover this spot with the new grass, which looks quite strange. But right now they protect this area so it's going to look even more beautiful. Uh, prime reason why I like this spot uh, and I prefer this much more than to other spots is because of the shade. Uh, this entire place is covered with the shade because of the trees. And uh, when you shoot your uh, bride and the groom standing by the arch and all of your guests, you have absolutely even light. Um, it's just so much better situation for us, for photographers and videographers. 
For you as a couple, uh, most important thing probably would be that this is completely blank canvas. So with a little bit of uh, details, flowers, different types of arches, different chairs, and things like that, you can create completely a uh, unique environment for yourself. And I've seen all kind of different setups over here. I've seen the pretty much like the doors standing right over here so the groom cannot see uh, the, the bride walking down the aisle. I've seen pretty much everything. Actually, the other very cool thing is that because we are in the forest, you pretty much cannot see anyone uh, walking down the aisle when you just stand in right over here. So it's complete surprise for the groom pretty much until uh, the moment the bride walked in. Another very beautiful thing about this specific uh, ceremony site is that you have uh, enough space for your family picture. So you can line up everyone right over here. And let's say if your uh, guest count is about 150, 170, your extended family is probably around 30, 40 people somewhere there. And as you might guess, uh, this previous spots won't fit everyone. So you have to go to the barn again to the place where you just did the wedding party pictures and if you do this right over here you don't have to repeat yourself another thing uh, from my experience usually parents prefer to take a pictures with their kids by the arch it's a very symbolic uh, moment for them very important moment and we can easily do this right over here without sacrificing on the light again even if i'm standing right over here that's the very nice soft light on me completely, like like everywhere. So imagine like the wedding dress right over here. It's not like you're facing the shade and your dress is not. You're completely in the shade pretty much anywhere you stand right over here. There is the fourth spot for the ceremony right over there, but honestly, we used it only once and it's not like a designated area or anything. Uh, the, my couple just picked this spot uh, right over there. So since we're done with the ceremony, we're gonna go and uh, check out the reception area right over there. But actually before we go that, I want to also point in uh, this specific spot right over here. I, I find out about it pretty much by accident when I was uh, shooting uh, one of my brides. And as you can see, if, like, if you're standing right over here and if you play with the light a little, uh, the sun that goes through the trees, through the lifts, creates the very cool like spots on me and they look just absolutely beautiful on the photos and videos. So it's a very good spot for like a mid midday photography and videography. Uh, I have very cool shots actually from here and they are happen to be uh, the bride's favorite shots. So uh, let's go to the reception site and I'm going to show you a few different layouts, what you can do there. Actually, before we jump right there, I want to show you one other spot, which is pretty unique for this location and for uh, Los Angeles area overall. And this is this bamboo forest right over here. Why is it unique is that um, I can only, uh, I, I only know one other spot with this type of background and that's uh, Arboretum Garden in Arcadia. Uh, there is also one actually in the uh, Huntington uh, Library but the, the fee for the shooting is just all the way up there so we don't count this location. Uh, but I, I thought that it's very nice place to just jump for five seconds to take a couple very good photos and imagine that the light is going to change from what it is right now to the sunset pictures. I think that's pretty much it all I can say about this specific spot. So let's jump right into the reception. And we're actually going to go through this uh, very interesting tunnels. And why is that is because it's a very cool spot for the pictures of the bride and the groom. Again, especially on the sunset time. Um, and they go all the way up there so you can use them quite a lot. It's very nice to hold the camera like next to them, go from the other spot and things like that. It's a very good creative opportunity right over here. 
Um, the reception. There's a few different layouts for reception. Uh, they primarily depends on your personal preferences and on your guest counts, of course. Uh, you can place, uh, and it's all actually start from the placement of the sweetheart table, the table where the bride and the groom sit in. On some of my weddings, this table is placed just right over here. So in this case, uh, your guest sitting uh, right on this area right over here, and your dance floor is all the way there uh, next by the gazebo. And in this case, your bar is probably right over here somewhere, the DJ is right there. Um, but what I want to highlight uh, is my personal favorite layout, and that's when the bride and the groom's table, the sweetheart table is placed right by the gazebo, just right over there. And the bar in this case placed right over here. And why is that important? Is because this venue uh, located in a residential area and this place has uh, noise restrictions. So because of that, uh, we have to place our speakers uh, right over here behind this glass. We can open this glass, but they still placed right over there and all the sound goes right over here. So naturally what you want to do, you want to set up your uh, dance pole right over here in this area where the sound is. And from my experience, and I don't think it's coincidence, uh, the wedding is much more fun when the bar is placed next to the dance floor, so right over here. So you want to do this right here. And you want to place your sweetheart table right over there because of the other reason. Uh, if again, let's say you have 100, 150 people, you're not going to place them in a small area, you want to place them right over here and right over there as well. So uh, you as the bride and the groom will see both uh, groups right there and right here. And usually, like naturally, we're all slightly different and usually more quieter companies prefer to sit right over there next by the tree and the loud guys who wants to be like close to the bar, close to the dance floor, they naturally want you to sit right over here. And that's actually a very cool spot that separates this two, I would say zones, like the dancing zone and the eating zone. Uh, this, this thing works just absolutely beautifully and people naturally always wanted to jump right over here, take a picture with their phones and the kids right to sit over here. So it's usually this place works, uh, this type of setup works much better than the previous that I mentioned. Again, the sweetheart table, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the bar is right over there, sweetheart table right over there. Um, in terms of the setup and layout, um, I work pretty much exclusively with uh, one wedding planner uh, at this uh, venue and she preferred to put, I'll link her in the description by the way, uh, and she liked to put the lights uh, right over here everywhere in this place like um, changing quite a lot with this amount of light. Overall, um, uh, this place would uh, change the, its mood quite dramatically depending on the accessories and the setups you have over here. One more thing I want to mention uh, while we're here on the reception side is this area. And I think that's the luxury if we call it the things they are worth. Because not every venue has the designated area for the wedding cake and all the sweets and everything like that, like completely separate location. Usually even the super expensive Fini at Malibu has like a table uh, with the things placed right there. Over here at this Fini, you're going to have your cake right on this table. So guests can just stand right over here and, and look at it. It's just completely uh, different uh, th thing to watch, like very cool thing. This area actually uh, used to be a working cabinet of the William Orchid, the, the guy who actually built this place, who owned this place in 1920s, 1930s. But right now it's a very cool spot for your sweetheart, uh, for your sweets. 
and uh, your tea and coffee and everything usually will be placed right over here down there. Um, one more thing about the reception that I want to mention. If you got lucky and it's raining on your wedding day and we have like six, eight days of rain here in California, but let's say you got lucky, uh, you will go and do your reception inside. It's still a very good spot. Um, I had one uh, wedding when the guys purposely choose to do everything inside, but honestly, I wouldn't do this. I would do everything outside. And again, it's my personal opinion, but I've done over 20 weddings over here in the past like seven years. So I think it's slightly valuable. So uh, let's go forward and I'll show you uh, sunset spots where I prefer to do uh, sunset pictures with the bride and the groom. And while we go there, I want to mention a very important thing of why we primarily choose this spot the way we are. Um, is, be is that's because the light at this venue goes right over here. So uh, closer to the sunset, your, uh, your sun going to be right there. So you want to shoot primarily opposite to the sun. It's actually counterintuitive on the sunset. You want to, you, uh, you want to shoot the opposite way from the sun. Uh, counter light, pretty much. Um, you want to shoot everything this way. So because of that, I like to start right over here there's a very cool uh orange trees right over there there's a whole line of them right now it might not look like much but it's actually a very beautiful spot if you shoot in this uh in the right way on the right lenses with the right light and with the right composition it's becoming a very very cool spot and uh, i'll show you on my actual images i'll I, i'll place them in this video uh, you can also shoot this way, depending on the time of the year. That's a pretty, pretty cool spot over there. Um, why I mentioned the light? Because, for example, we have the similar trees right over there, but because of the lighting situation, it would not give you uh, such a magical uh, light on the sunset. Another place that I want to mention, and that's for my brave wedding party, who wants to spend some extra time and do the cool shots, is this simple spot right over here. And I like to line up my wedding party just right over here and ask them to walk back and forth like from uh, this spot to there and from there towards me and do a few like very natural, uh, like photojournalistic candid shots, would, I, I would say. I mean, they call this way, but um, the, the secret is that uh, no one from the wedding party would line up like that and just walk uh, by the road right over here. You have to organize everything. But the, the shot itself look, looks very, very good. Another spot, the third spot is this huge tree right over here. I think it's like 700 years old or something like that. I have more detailed information on my uh, blog with an in-depth review of the orchid range. And actually check it out because I have all the numbers right over there. How much this venue cost, what is the car fee, what is the noise restriction. All of the details are there, not in, not in this video. So what I like to do at this specific spot, um, I like to place my bride and the groom somewhere there and uh, go all the way back there to get a very wide shot of this tree. And again, uh, this look changed dramatically when, uh, when the sun is almost set. It's all about the light, all the photography and videography about the light, how you work with the light, how you're familiar, how the light goes throughout the venue, throughout the day. So when our light is just right over there, right when our sun, sun is right over there, I place my couple right over here and do the wide shot. Also because of this uh, branches right there and leaves and everything, it creates a very cool uh, shade. Uh, so we can do lots of close up shots. So just us, like the bride and the groom, photographer and videographer, we can spend like easily 30 minutes right over here 
doing the very cool shots. Um, there's also one more spot all the way there at the park. And we did it tw uh, only twice throughout all of my weddings. It's a little bit far of a walk, but it's very good uh, spot as well. Uh, also, I previously mentioned the, let's call it La La Land spot right there. That's a very cool place to do the sunset, sunset, sunset pictures overall. And I think uh, with the sunset pictures, we pretty much conclude uh, our review of the venue. I hope it wasn't too long. But now when you walked with us, when you got the, an idea of how, um, how big is this venue overall, how far you have to walk from one place to another for your pictures, um, you now have better idea whether you want to uh, book an appointment with these guys and uh, walk around in this place for real um what else we covered pretty much everything we co we started with the parking lot we covered the getting ready shots uh, i showed you my favorite spots for the first look for the wedding party for the family pictures for the ceremony i showed you my favorite layout for the reception so now you have all the information uh, check out my uh, blog with all of the details, all of the numbers and everything there. And give those guys a call and book a tour with them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was very helpful. Again, my name is Sergey, and I'm the owner of Sergey Green Studio. We provide photography videography service. And I'll see you next Thursday.